Hello there my fellow Holotable Heroes and welcome to another Grand Arena video. So in this one I'll be showing you battles from the final round of week 3 in season 22. Obviously before I get to it, let's go ahead check out those feats, see if there are any feats I'll have to look out for uh, in this round. Uh, if I have a chance, that's the one where you have to win a battle with base and Chirrut. So depending on if, you know how it goes, do I need to banner pinch or whether I have you know room to drop a couple of banners here and there. I'll see if I can knock this out as well. Otherwise, you know, pretty in good shape with the rest of the feet, so don't have to worry about those. So then let's hop now into the arena and have a look at my opponent for today. So opponent for today is Admiral Rage Putin, and he's a part of SL Star JS Guild. Uh, let's look at his roster. So GP wise, he's got a little bit advantage over me, but very minor. However, he does not have Ray, whereas I do, so definitely Galactic Legend Advantage goes to me. Especially pretty free Galactic Legend Advantage is really big. Uh, so we'll see how he's done. And he does have 5 star Executor, or I do have 6 stars. I mean 5 and 6 stars, not much difference there uh, as well. But yeah, definitely having an extra Galactic Legend hopefully will be uh, helpful here uh, when I'm clearing his defense. There you go, he attacked already, so let's go ahead. All one shots in the top zone. I mean, looking at the score, it looks like all one shots across the board, anyways. Uh, let's look at the bottom. All one shots, even on my Supreme Nakalo there. No issues. Let's look at the, the ships now as well. One shot my Malevolence, one shot my Executrix. So, very efficient player, it seems. Uh, let's look at the back as well. And there we go. Alright, so let's look at the top now, what he said for me. Oh, interesting Django team. Um, the rest of the board pretty standard apart from the Django up there. And let's look at the bottom. Okay, looks like we have a Ray Jedi training. Not many people said this on defense. Hugs. Oh, Treya, okay. Hmm. Treya could be tricky in 3 3 You don't often see Treya there, so definitely trying to see what to do there. Um, so, but anyway, let's start with that new team first, I guess. Uh, check out the speeds on these guys. Uh, wow, okay, that's a very fast new, 302. Whoa. So it looks like my opponent's got some nice speed sets here on his uh, defense. 307 for Duke, I mean, that's okay. That's quite good as well. Um, then let's look at the... Wow, that's a Relic 7 on B1. Oh, that'll hurt. Uh, what's he got? 308 speed mm. and nearly 10k offense wow okay that's a scary v1 here uh, so I think what I'll do because these guys are so fast especially pretty free if you know extortion starts spreading these guys are running circles around you so we need to have a way to get b1 down SAP now normally I would run one Mothma but uh, these guys are so much faster than my Momo of my team that I don't think it would work well. Uh, so I'll do all use uh, here Shakti, Rex and Fives. And uh, because of, you know, uh, Rex extra speed and their more speed from Shakti, we should be able to outrun these guys and hopefully whittle down B1 before he causes too much issues with his AoEs, you know, at nearly 10k offense. That could be quite devastating. So let's just go ahead all out uh, on B1. Just do a mass assist here with Shakti. Uh, just get B1 out first and then we'll worry about the rest. Just keep pinging away. Okay, here they come. Unfortunately, because stealth, no counterattacks from my guys. Uh, let's go ahead top up Rex. You can see how quickly <laughs> Rex is losing protection. He's very squishy. Even with that stat boost that we do get from uh, Shakti's lead. Alright, making good progress here on B1. Let's just cleanse that off. Uh, Clans of Extortion as well, we have to keep it in check, there we go, so B1, no more stealth on him, so we got a nice couple of counterattacks here, uh, let's heal up 5, okay, there goes B1, uh, so kind of, you know, the win now is secure, it's just a case of can I pull out here max banners, because uh, my opponent there, he averaged 54 banners, uh, that's obviously including the ship's battles where you can get a little bit more, obviously, a little bit more than 60 banners, but still I have to be as efficient as I can, I have no idea what's hiding at the back. At first aerial advantage, let's just get that new revive out of the way. Uh, then I'll just a little bit try and heal up here. 
Let's see if I can top up again, Rex. Oh boy, Rex, Rex keeps taking a beating. There we go. Let's take Newt out and then hopefully I can uh, time a second aerial advantage here uh, for the time where my 5C is at full protection because as you can see, <laughs> Dooku keeps counter-attacking, trying to snipe one banner for me. So see if we can actually do it. Ah, oh, here comes the shock as well. Right, lots of counter-attacks. Doesn't look like it's happening. It looks like I'll have to settle here for a 53 banner win. There we go. Sniped one banner away, but oh boy. All right, still, you know, quite happy with that result in the end. All right, so let's uh, move on here. Uh, we'll keep working towards the bottom. Let's get, you know, the no doubt, now the no doubt battle out of the way. I'll just use my C Fraternal here versus his CLS. And you can pretty much get 56 banners here. Uh, just don't go into ultimate or C Fraternal because then you lose that special ability to recover protection. Um, these guys can't really take you out anyway, so you don't need to have ultimate. Just keep using basics and then recover protection whenever you need to. And as long as you time uh, correctly in the end, uh, you should be able to get away there with uh, 56 banners. You've seen me do this before, so you know it's a pretty straightforward thing. I'm a little bit, you know, liberty here with using Galactic Legends up front. Um, I have four Galactic Legends available for attack, so as long as I've got two Galactic Legends for the back, I think I should be fine here. Um, because he one-shot everything, so this tells me that he didn't go too heavy on defense at the back, hopefully. Unless there are any surprises, but still, um, he does not have Ray anyway, so I don't need to save my C Fraternal to go up against Ray in case she's on defense. And he's not really all that useful versus Kahlo and Master Kenobi anyways. Oh, there we go, timed it perfectly for a full max 56 banner win. Alright, so it's moving on, on to the next here team at the bottom. So another team that I was, uh, you know, very sure what I want to do is, um, is this uh, Hux team here. Um, versus Hux, I like to use Bastila um, because of all that bonus protection. In most cases, you will be able to get away uh, with full banners here, especially if you do use Hermitiora. However, I want to save Hermitiora still, just in case I need him at the back for something. Um, so I'm just going in here with Kenobi. Hopefully he can tank enough to maintain uh, all his protection. Uh, so then I can get away with 54 banners. Obviously you don't get bonus Terminator to begin with from Bastila's lead because of Hux in there. Uh, but still, you know, my Bastila was quite quick. So she was able to only get a couple of hits on Hux. We can go ahead, dispel the taunt. Here comes the counter attacks. All right, finally taken Hux out of here. I used to use Ezra here instead of uh, my cam, but now that I have cam, I don't use Ezra anymore because Ezra is a lot more squishy, uh, so you can quickly lose a banner or two if you use him there instead. Since then, now just kind of with Hux out of the way, they will not counter attack anymore. Uh, but still, you know, as you can see, they, they are having some assists and counter attacks going. Now I got Sift Trooper out of here. Uh, let's call now cam for an assist. One hit, two hit. Mmm. I'll just do one hit here. Oh, took him out. All right, I'll take it. I think I barely managed to squeeze 54 out there because both Bastila there and Kenobi were close to losing all of their bonus protection. All right, so moving on, we got two teams here. And uh, now, maybe not the trickiest, but it's not something um, I faced often here um, in 3v3. Now, Ray, you know, she's very good at sniping banner because of that uh, healing immunity she can put on somebody. Uh, they're very fast out of the gate, obviously, because of BB-8 is unique. They will gain, uh, both BB-8 and R2 will be gaining 16% bonus turn meter to begin with. And, you know, whenever they start wiggling, spreading secret intel, then Ray will, will as well gain bonus turn meter. Now in 5v5, uh, troopers were great versus Ray. Uh, so I'll try this in 3v3 as well, see how that works. I'm obviously bringing in Gideon. Because we will need two mass assists to probably get some damage done there. Uh, and as well, obviously, Gideon's mass assist does not get counter attack. And furthermore, you know, he also can push the meter back on those guys whenever he get a turn. Uh, and most likely there, I think BB-8 will just about outrun my Gideon. I don't think my Gideon will be fast enough to outrun him. Yep, there goes BB-8. Now my Gideon was fast enough. Um, let's push now turn meter back. Here was debating to go for R2. To go for BB-8. I'm like, well, BB-8 was squishier, so let's just go after him. However, I didn't realize that he will be gaining um, their foresight, 
while I'm doing my mass assist. I just thought that after you finish your attacks, he will just gain foresight. But he got their foresight cover three times, so he really evaded a couple of uh, attacks. Uh, so I should have gone there for R2, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm just thinking, oh boy, am I in trouble now or not? Now luckily we did get protection up there as well, so we got a little bit more protection here. So here we go, now I'm going after R2. Um, if, I go, if I would have gone after R2 in the first place, he would have been taken out already. I was still able to get R2 out, uh, however I'll be taking now a couple of hits. Um, possibly losing a banner or two. Now these both of these guys, they keep getting four sides, so they're very hard here to pin down. More dodging there. Uh, just trying to here get Ray out. I'm staying away from BB-8 because of his counter attacks. Okay, here we go. One hit camas. Uh, here we go. Let's just get Ray out of it. Out of it. There we go. Okay, so we Ray out. I'm just trying to stall here just to see if I can uh, top up their uh, protection on Gideon. I think we should be good here for 54. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we a misplay here in the beginning. I was able to get out 54 banners. So if you're doing this team, definitely go after R2 first because BB-8 will be dodging left and right anyways. So I was kind of lucky there um, to get away with Max banners. So we only got Treya left here. <sighs> now Treya, it's a banner sniping team because, you know, most of the teams we use, they rely kind of on assists, attacks out of turns and things like that. And obviously Treya's leadership uh, will penalize you for that because you will keep losing health and protection whenever you do that. It's a very tricky team in 3v3 to get max banners here. So I decided to go in with my uh, master look here because anyway, I said I can, use, I can afford using two Galactic Legends here. However, the other two Jedi are just kind of, you know, leftover Jedi there. I don't want to use like... Hermit Yoda or Yoda or Luke with anything because all the damage will be coming from true damage here from Luke's leadership anyway. So you just need a couple of Jedi's to call them for assist. Push back their meter, however, Nihilus will be gaining bonus their meter whenever you critically hit or apply debuffs on Sion and Treya. That's why I also brought in Old Ben so we can remove more turn meter and then here i called uh, qui-gon for an assist because his basic attack also removes turn meter so i was able to push turn meter there back got niles out of here already um try there she'll be getting some bonus protection whenever we apply debuffs on her allies and i'm stuck behind the tone here on Sion. <laughs> get him out as well push back turn meter on treya and uh, that's pretty much it unfortunately because all these attacks out of turn i'll be walking away best case scenario here 52 banners almost got her out uh oh well just yeah i'll take my 52 here Betraya, definitely tricky team here especially free free to get max banners but uh, at this point i'm like okay do you know what so far so good i think i can afford to drop a couple of banners here because i don't want to use any better teams i have no idea what's at the back all right so the back zone has been revealed and no Galactic Legends, however there are some odd combinations there, Tarkin with IPD and Royal Guard, and then Mando there, like not as not scary teams necessarily, but not teams I would normally see on defense, so definitely need to pay attention to what all these guys do to make sure I can get max banners. And yes, we do have this Relic 7 Django, those guys always, that guy always scares me, as you've seen my uh, GSC streams before, you will know that I had couple of close encounters already with him even lost the drop the battle <laughs> relic 7 Django is just crazy so let's first take care of this grievous team uh, now because uh, no b1 here i think this is a, a very easy team for mon mothma because you don't have to worry about those aoe's from b1 uh, you can pretty much just go for b2 don't worry about you know b1 healing him and obviously you get a little bit stuck in beginning um Especially look at the speed on this Magnet Guard, very fast. So definitely modding for my opponent is here very good. Um, but still, should be able to go. Once you get uh, that buff immunity on Magnet Guard, he won't be able to taunt anymore. And then you can just go all out on B2, get B2 out, uh, and then Magna, and then obviously find the Grievous. And obviously Magna Guard there on his first turn, he will use his Dispel. Um, but it's okay, we can all I reapply buff immunity on him. He won't be taunting anymore. Um, and then we can just go all, all out on B2 now, so we don't feed turn meter to him. And once B2 is out, you know, it's a pretty straightforward battle, to be honest. Uh, it gives you plenty of time to re keep recovering health and protection. Okay, we go. Obviously, have to be careful here uh, that you don't grieve Grievous back-to-back -back turns. However, as you can see, these guys are quite fast. They're getting a lot of turns in. Now, I'm actually going after Grievous. 
uh, first little bit just that it gives me time uh, to recover some health and protection before I take Magna Guard and give Grievous another bonus turn. There he goes. All right, I'll just go ahead heal up. Again, Mon Mopan versus Grievous. You know, best case scenarios. 53 banners really because you don't have a whole lot of firepower to take Grievous out fast enough. So he keeps putting hits into K2. Um, so, you know, as long as I get 53 here, I think I'll be quite happy. Uh, a couple more punches here, I think that should do it. Oh, no, not quite. One more. Are we? Oh, okay. I promise this is the last one. There we go. <laughs> Cut Grievous out for 53 banners. Definitely uh, started dropping some banners now, but hopefully now, uh, you know, that slowly trickier teams are getting out of the way. Hopefully then I'll be able to, you know, put uh, the rest of my roster to good use for some, you know, hopefully 54 banner wins. Um, because I don't know what's happening in the ship zone as well. So still have, you know, a few teams here um, for color and unmasked. I um, mean, it doesn't really matter mod so much. What I think I'll do here, um, I have done Jedi Knight Luke, but I really want to save Jedi Knight Luke for one of those bounty hunters teams up top because of his must stun. So instead I'll be using Ray Jedi training. Uh, you know, if played correctly, this can also be 54 banners versus this kind of color team without Hux or Sif Trooper, especially Hux. Because Hux will prevent your bonus turn meter again when he has advantage. Um, so we'll just go in, you know, standard right team, you know, mods don't matter so much. You get so much bonus turn meter from, you know, BB-8 and then Ray and everything that you can run circles around these guys. You obviously want to remove the taunt from Kylo and then just go all out here on Executioner. Just get him out because, you know, he can do some damage and feed turn meter as well to the rest of the team. So just try to get him out as quickly as you can. And then we worry about OG Kyle on his AoEs. There we go. All right, so he died from burning. Just keep using AoE there um, to you know hit multiple targets to feed more turn meter to our team. Then let's go after OG Kylo here. Ability block stun. Keep using specials. Um, obviously, keep exposing their BB-8 because when he evades, he will re recover some health and protection to make sure he stays top tap. Uh, then I will keep uh, under control there, color and unmasked, so he doesn't stun or taunt or something like that. And now because all of my guys are pretty much full health and protection, I don't have to stall this battle out. I can just go ahead, finish Kylo here for a nice 54 banner win. If sometimes, for example, you need another illuminated destiny to get your R2 topped up, uh, you can stall this battle for as long as you like. Just do not put healing immunity on color and unmask. And he will keep recovering health and protection whenever you hit him, apply debuffs, just keep him stunned so he can't attack and you should still be good for 54 banners uh, with this kind of raid team. There we go, finally back onto the train of uh, max banners. So let's see if we can continue this trend before we hit the fleet zone. Now these teams can snipe some banners away from you, so I wouldn't take them lightly. Uh, especially there you got Relic 7 Django with Nest. You know, Django, he'll start off with Bounty Hunters as well, obviously, ignore stones. Look at this, he's got critical damage sets on him. Quite decent speed to 84, and he'll be gaining plus 30 speed from his lead. And so will Vet Hunt, so will Nest, because they're both uh, uh, scoundrels, so they will both be gaining plus 30 speed as well. Um, definitely no team that can snipe, snipe some banners away. But luckily, you know, I still have a, a couple of good teams left um, because there were no Galactic Legends set by my opponent. So hopefully I can get away with some good Bannerine. I do have my Commander Sokatan and Kenobi. I think the two of them here should be enough. Uh, I think I'll just, for no point of taking Django out, I guess, because, um, you know, Force Sleep does not prevent revives. Might as well get Nest out of here and don't worry about her anymore. And then let's go after Django here. Um, Okay, here comes the AoE, dodge that. Um, let's go after Han here, because uh, uh, Django's got any way on him, ability block. Um, but looking back, I should have just taken Django out quickly, because I think I would have been able to take him out before he gets a turn. And there he goes. He put a big hit on my guys. Put healing immunity on uh, Master Kenobi. It was perfect timing on his end. Here I'm just checking. What does these abilities exactly do? Because I don't use Kenobi all that much, really. Um, so I'm still learning what it does, but I think he snapped a band away from me. And that's why I went in undersized, you know, just in case I do not walk away uh, with full protection on everybody. At least, you know, I still got 54 banners. Um, and Relic 7 Django still <laughs> trying to 
to figure this guy out, but slowly I'll get there. So we got a second bounty hunter team here with Bosk. Very good speed as well on Bosk, 310. Uh, very rarely I see Bosks more than 300 really. So it's something we have to keep an eye out here. Uh, looking at, oh, Boba 281, okay. Mm. Okay, so some good mods on these guys. So do you have Genonite look here? Again, this team can snipe banners, I guess. So I'm just going here to 2v3 here and see how many banners I can get. Uh, I did make sure that my Hermit Yoda is faster. He was 316, so just a little bit faster than Bosk. We can get stuns out, out on these guys and now we just have to go after Boba as fast as we can. Almost got him once. Uh, here comes the taunt. Now luckily, obviously, Genite Luke cannot be stunned, so he will be counter-attacking when these guys hit him and his basic, uh, you know, he's doing true damage now to tank, so we should be able to get through Bosk fairly quickly. However, you know, they're applying debuffs here, healing up. Okay, there we go. Oh! See, here I thought my Hermit Yoda was in trouble, but Boba kept using his basic for some reason. I'm not sure um, why AI would do that. Uh, because there you go, I'm pretty sure Boba could have one shot with his rocket my Hermit Yoda, but so I was very fortunate there. Maybe the AI is programmed just to use basic uh, to try to get to contract faster, because basic can double tap, right, and then you can get to contract faster under boss lead. So maybe that's why Boba kept using his basic instead of his execute. Uh, so definitely here, for a moment there, I thought I was in trouble. Uh, because I forgot again that versus Dengar, when he's in stealth, Hermit Yoda would not be able to regain stealth, which means he would be exposed, uh, so Boba could attack him. Again, 54 banner win. Um, you know, I'll take that, I think, because at some point I already thought I'm going to lose Hermit, so I will not complain with this. So one more banner sniping team, Beskar, uh, there Mandalorian. Uh, I still had my Jedi Trevan left, but I wanted to save Jedi Trevan for the bottom there. Um, so I will be using uh, Han and Chewie. Uh, they do have a pre taunt, unfortunately. Uh, so I could go straight for uh, Bam, but then, you know, I'll get him below 100% health, and then he'll get a bonus turn. He'll go into Whistling Birds or whatever, and then I'll be stuck behind L3. He's taunt because L3 is only gear 12. Might as well try and take L3 out, um, which will obviously give Mando a chance to get out his whistling birds but you know hopefully we can shake off or maybe even resist the healing immunity from him so to recover some banners we'll see how this one will go um, so well you know not a hard team to take out not the easiest team to walk away with full max banners just because of that healing immunity uh, that whistling birds can apply to all your team so just something to bear in mind here um, so I'm just you know what could go after Bam but L3 only gear 12, might as well knock her out so I don't have to worry about too much. Or oh, should I go after Bam? Nah, let's go after L3. Oof. There we go, just take her out. Almost got her. Because that would be Relic L3, I probably I, would, I wouldn't do it because you wouldn't be able to take her fast enough. I would still kind of go after Bam and then dispel her taunt with Chewbacca and then try to finish off Bam. But this, in this case I decided to do it this way. Uh, here comes the heal, which is good and damage immunity because now it gives me a couple of turns here to hopefully Shake off this healing immunity so I can get some banners back Okay, well Won't be able to top up wedge I'm afraid but at least uh, I got their hand back for a 53 banner rain So again drop the banner there because remember guys this is an efficiency round in the end So every banner counts All right, let's see what's hiding in the fleet zone um Probably he put his executor on defense, I would imagine. Yeah, he did. Okay, so we'll do executor mirror match. Um, he's five star, mine six star. So she'd be good to go here. Just depends, obviously, on RNG, like what kind of banners you can walk away with. Uh, just checking the speeds on his Zanadu Blood and Razor Crest. Um, there. Uh, so 181 on Zanadu Blood, 180. Okay, so he's got the right speed here set where Razor Crest is slower. However, uh, my Razor Crest and my Zenodo Blood are even slower than his, so this should make it easier, hopefully, that I can snipe out their Zenodo Blood. But because, uh, obviously, um, my 6-star is faster than his 5-star executor, did, could, did, this can cause complications sometimes, because the turn order is a little bit different. So I just see how this one will go. Yeah, they're going after my Razor Crest, doing the AoE now. 
I don't like that breach over on my razor crest, but we'll just go with it for now. Okay. All right, come on, give me a double tap. One hit. <sighs> Why I never get double taps here? All right, uh, bringing in Ebon Hawk, uh, get Chaff out so they can't target lock me. Finish off their Xanadu blood. Uh, let's see what I've got. Okay, they, ooh, they got Mark on my Razor Crest. Oof, I don't like that. Um, okay, let's step Razor Crest. He's got evasion down, so he won't be able to evade. Let's go ahead, reapply Chaff. Uh, then do a mass attack here. Mm, no, oh boy. Oh boy, my Razor Crest is in trouble there. Uh, let's see if I can try and save him somehow. Mm, come on, give me a double tap now. Come on, one hit, two hit. There we go. All right, contract triggered. Perfect. Uh, I also sh uh, shook off their um, breach and mark from Razor Crest with that move. Okay, here we go. To bring in reinforcement. You know what? Let's just use ultimate. Just blow this up, guys. Um. Hopefully this can keep my Razor Crest alive because you do get protection up when you use your ultimate. So this actually saved my Razor Crest now from being taken out. Um, so it was, looks like the right decision to pull off the ultimate first. Still trying to keep alive my there Razor Crest. There we go. Now see Houndstooth cannot ignore Taunt, so we should be good here uh, to keep my Razor Crest alive just to maintain that one banner. Going to top up their Xanadu blood to full protection, hopefully. Got a buff immunity in Houndstooth. Uh, boom, there we go. This is going to be like, what, 61 banners? Yeah, all right. Yeah, 61, uh, 62, pretty much. That's what I, I can expect. Uh, because, you know, I do miss out on the four banners by not having a 7-star executor. So this I was pretty happy with. Uh, as I said, I have to average overall 54 banners, so even if I squeeze out 60 banners per fleet battle, I think I should still be good. Now this fleet has me worried, because check this out, he's got a gear 12 gauntlet, which will be very fast, 154, and it gains extra 45 speed as well here from its unique. So it'll go first, before my guys, and then it will go apply buff immunity on Anakin. And then Anakin, uh, not only he won't be able to gain stealth if they dis, uh, dis got his uh, unending loyalty off, he won't be able to gain Valor. And then he won't be able to keep boosting Terminator to a Negotiator. So these ones can get really ugly real fast. So they go buff immunity on Anakin. It's not what you want. And anyway, let's just keep going here. Masses is there. Alright, buff immunity on their TIE Bomber. And that's why I brought in Rex in the starting lineup instead of 5, so I can top up my... Uh, Anakin uh, also give him extra turn meters. Hopefully, he can take a couple of quick turns to get rid of that buff immunity. However, there goes my Valor, unfortunately. Um, so now my negotiator won't be as fast as it would have been otherwise. He won't be getting bonus turn meter. Obviously, bring in plus the first reinforcement, clean up all this mess, boost turn meter. Uh, now they cleansed off there with Gauntlet. So definitely do not underestimate the Starkin fleets with Gauntlet in the starting lineup. Luckily, um, one of my um, arena mates, he was running this in arena a few months ago uh, before Executrix, uh, before Executor really uh, hit the arena. Um, so I had some practice versus it and once I lost with Negotiator versus that fleet. So I'm definitely familiar with Gauntlet in this fleet, how it operates. Um, so don't let it fool you. This is a very scary fleet for the uh, negotiator just because of that buff immunity to begin with. Um, here I was thinking what to bring in. Um, or a consular obviously can give you some uh, protection recovery that you need to keep your team alive. That's why I brought it uh, as a reinforcement here. Still trying to get Bomber out. Almost got him. That should do it. But as you can see I'm struggling to keep my pilots alive. Uh, uh, more buff immunity there uh, from Emperor Shuttle. Going after now uh, Tide Vans. Finally got him down. Here we can now top up protection. Y Wing again. See, that's why Consular is a great enforcement because I pretty much would have lost Y Wing at some point if I wouldn't be able to keep him topped up. Now Rex is a little bit low. Here comes the Seed Bomber sniping more banners. Oh, boy. And as well, putting days on your guys. Um, again, here, why we in trouble? Let's cleanse him up there with uh, my plow. I'm like, just throw the bombs. Hopefully, we can do some damage. 
that's obviously Seed Bomber uh, without uh, healing immunity on him. He'll keep recovering protection whenever uh, those concussion mines explode. Uh, luckily, I got their days on him, so he won't be counterattacking. So I'm just trying to get him out. He keeps uh, regaining as well uh, protection up because of Emperor Shuttle. So definitely, there you go. A tricky fleet to deal with. No healing immunity. Did land buff immunity on him. Here comes the ultimate from Tarkin. Uh, lost my plow. Oh uh, boy. As you can see, very messy battle, very tricky, so we do not underestimate the gauntlet there, especially with the Tarkin fleet. There we go, here they come, yeah, I'm like, come on, give me a big assist there. He's got defense up, so, you know, wasn't able to do a big hit. Alright, perfect, we do have buff immunity on him. Let's Thermeter, feed Thermeter to Anakin, get gauntlet out. Oh uh, boy, okay, push back Thermeter there, come on, give me a mass assist. I don't want to bring any reinforcement, let's just finish this if we can, there we go, alright. <laughs> so definitely, you know, tricky battle, so I was quite fortunate to walk away there with 62 banners. Um, so definitely like, be careful when you're going up against a fast gauntlet, because you can really mess up your negotiator. But anyway, I was glad that this worked, um, because I really, I don't think I can afford really to drop up a battle here at all. Alright, so we're in good shape now, we just have to one-shot the bottom, which shouldn't be too much of an issue with what I have left. Uh, just checking this Mothma team here. Oh, okay, that's a good, quite good speed on Mothma, 236, she's gaining plus 50 speed as well. So she'll be at 286 speed effective, uh, which will make her faster than Massive Triumvirant. Um, but I'm not too worried about it, because, you know, they don't have Wedge in there, so they don't have that one-two punch with Biggs and Wedge. Uh, I'm not sure, really sure why bringing Cassian in there. Uh, what was the reasoning behind it? Uh, would be curious to find out, but you know, there you go. They put a couple of hits on Nihilus, but the rest of the battle goes as normal. Um, just, you know, avoid AoEs until you can get Isolate on Biggs. Uh, so then once you have Isolate on him, he won't be able to assist, gain bonus turn meter. And from here on out, just plays out as any other uh, 3v3 Mod Mothma and Treya battles. You'll walk away most likely with 52 banners. Um, it's just how it is. Okay. There we go, finish off Biggs. Uh, now I just have to time time this correctly, make sure that my sign has full protection before I finish the battle here. Okay, uh, yeah, increasing cooldowns, there we go, perfect timing for a 52 banner win. Alright, moving on. Let's go and have a look what else we've got here. Um, probably go after maybe... Geos, yeah, I'll just look at the mods on these guys. Okay, he's got tenacity, some decent speed as well. Um, so I'm just do what I've been pretty much doing ever since the Vader nerf. He's pretty much almost <laughs> reserved to go after Geos there. Um, so I'm just bringing Palpatine, Vader, obviously. Also, you need Thrawn in there in most cases. Um, it's just because you don't get stuck behind the taunt. Because now that, uh, you know, Vader has been nerfed, you can't any anymore just you know do a soul or something like that these guys are tanky get rid of spy no issues there oh i actually landed an ability block on geo brute that does not happen often at all another force crash here uh get rid of soundtrack keep going after brute alpha here give me a stun uh, okay that was too much to ask i guess getting ability block and stun that would have been too much uh, but obviously thrown can top up protection so no issues there uh, there we go Nice, easy win here for 54. Uh, it's sad that that's what has come to, that Vader is the best use for countering Geos these days. But hey, I'll take it. Alright, so moving on, um, got Maul as well. And now Maul can snipe some banners, but I have used in the previous round, I think, or the round before, Bosk versus Maul. And it actually it works really well, just because with Bosk you, know, you have all this protection recovery. Um, so you can end up quite easily here with 54 banners, especially in this lineup without Marauder here. Um, you know, they don't even have really a whole lot of firepower. The only, obviously, their little bit banner sniping potential is Sid, because there you go, on his basic, he can land healing immunity on your guys, uh, so they can't uh, recover half. Alright, but luckily Bosk, you know, when he uses Taunt, he will dispel, dispel that. So just working on Sidious so you can stop putting healing immunity on my guys. Ah, come on, get a stun. There we go. Let's blow up Sidious. There we go. And just like hopefully we can now here end up with full protection. 
Come on, there we go. Hila Bosk, there we go. Line up a rocket and boom! 54. So you got definitely like Bosks for me at least seems like a go-to here team for 54 banner versus mall. Um, so pretty easy win there. Uh, we got Mando there, we got Tarkin. <laughs> Let's check out the speeds on these guys. 255, but you know, they're getting plus 30 speed there uh, from Tarkin lead as well. You, I don't often see people having a relic probe droid, let alone put in a defense. <laughs> You have to be careful, right? Because if Probe Droid there gets below 100% health, he can maybe not, uh, you know, 99k damage these days is not all that much anymore. But, you know, it can snipe a banner or two away. And that's why I saved my Jedi Trevan so I can just go ahead, mark him down, take him out, and be done with it. And once he's out, you know, it's no threat really. It's just a case of here uh, taking out Tarkin and then Royal Guard as well. But you will just see how beefy Royal Guard is. It'll, it'll take like uh, 30 seconds after a finish of Tarkin to take him out. So that's why I'm spinning up the footage here a bit. So I don't waste your time. There we go. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Only Royal Guard left now. He's got a retribution, so he'll be counterattacking. So make sure you know to keep spreading foresight, protection up, and things like that. Uh, so you do want to maintain full banners here if you can. There we go. He did take a poke at my Yoda. But, you know, because of attack out of turn there, Yoda was able to top up his protection for a full 54 banner win. So far, so good. Now I've did calculation and I think I just needed 43 or so banners here to win at this point. 44 banners because he's got higher GP. Um, so I can afford here to go in with Ray. Uh, and that's why I also saved Ray here for this final match. Uh, with Baze and Chirrut, you know, to get that feat knocked out. Uh, where you, know, you have to win a battle with... Um, Shirt and base, and you know, because of Ray here, uh, we'll keep feeding them uh, here bon bonus protection, so they should maintain uh, full health and protection. Whirlwind there, uh, Mand obviously, it prevents revives, so you don't have to worry about coming him back. And now, with these two guys, you know, they don't have a lot of damage. Uh, here, I decided to heal up with Shirt, however, this is not a heal, it's a health equalization, <laughs> uh, so it was a mistimed one, uh, so unfortunately. Their Chirrut is not at 100% health, uh, so again, I'm just trying to stall out, stall out here in the battle. So hopefully, Chirrut, there we go, can get, can gain his heal over times, then get a turn, top up his health to 100%. Now I can go pop the ultimate. Um, I know I don't need 54 banners to win, but I don't know. I just want to get max banners whenever I can. There we go, 54 banners, and also done that uh, base and Chirrut fit in the process, and there we go. Uh, so this then in the end finished all my round, we both one shot everything, so both very efficient here. Uh, so let's ju just go ahead, make sure that I really got that feat, because you know, I do love my feats. There we go, got that done. And this completes then the final round here of week 3, season 22 for me. Uh, now before I sign off, let me first give a shout out as well uh, to my opponent, he actually messaged me before he started attacking. He did recognize me, he said, hey, Mr. B Dynasty, we had a little bit of a chat there. Um, so definitely a very, very nice player to go up against. Um, and, you know, very efficient. He's, although he didn't put any, like, very strong teams on defense, they were all designed in a way that if you're not careful, they will snipe banners away, which obviously you can see resulted in my score, you know. He's not, like, max score that otherwise it would have been. And I think what it come down to, to be honest, is me having an extra gal galactic legend over him, I think. Uh, that potentially has given me the edge uh, to secure the win. If we would both have equal Galactic Legend, then uh, maybe this score would have been closer uh, for sure, because, you know, having extra Galactic Legends always gives you possibilities for max banners easily. All right, guys, uh, this is all uh, for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you find it useful, let me know in the comments below or on my Discord server. But until then, have fun, enjoy your life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.